Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name's Kyle and this is our Crazy Sheep World Headquarters and Jeremy will be back in just a second. He went to get the mail. Ah! What is it? Ah! Was it good news or bad news? Ah! What, did we get a check in the mail? Did we win a prize? Did your new neckerchief come in? Is our electricity being shut off? Well, what is it? I got a letter. Oh, well cool. Who's it from? Uh, secret admirer. Ooh, mysterious. Someone admires you secretly. What's it say? <clears throat> Dear Jeremy, that's me. I've got some good news for you. I love you. Whoa, bringing out the big guns right away. I love you more than you could ever know, and that is the unchanging truth. Wow, that is beautifully written. <laughs> And I have already done lots of things to show my love for you. What has this person done to show their love for you? I don't know, but I kind of like being admired. In 1999, two young men had a dream to create a children's show to teach children about the Bible. After months of prayer and searching for breathable neon polyester fabric, they followed their dream. Ten years later, the dream has turned into the most watched children's show in North America and winner of the Albino Pigeon Award of Excellence in Children's Broadcasting. This is their story. Greetings guys and gals, I'm Average Jeff, and I've got some good news. Hola guys and gals, I'm Boonsy, and I've got some good news. We've been waiting a really long time for this good news. That's right, Average Jeff. It's been promised, and it's finally here. Do you guys know the good news? That's right. Today's book of the Bible is Matthew. Yeah. Uh, we had been waiting to do an episode on the book of Matthew for a long time. Um, yeah, so when the opportunity came, we couldn't pass it up. I mean, the four Gospels are legendary. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the story of Jesus. I mean, 
It doesn't get any better than that. Do you remember how many books are in the Bible? Good answering. 39 of these books were written before Jesus was even born. Those are called the Old Testament. And 27 of these books were written after Jesus was born. Those are called the New Testament. And only four books in the New Testament tell the whole story of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So what do we call those four books of the Bible, guys and gals? That's right. They're called the Gospels. So, Average Jeff, what does the word gospel mean? Well, right from the beginning, we start to learn what part of the story Matthew is really trying to tell. Huzzah! Greetings, lads and lasses! So you want to read the book of Matthew, do you? Well, if you want to read the book of Matthew, you got to know a few things first. You got to know that the Old Testament is full of prophecies telling about a future king, the Messiah, who would save the Israelites from the world of sin and wretchedness. You got to know that the Jewish people had been waiting for this promised Messiah for a very, very, very long time. You gotta know what the book of Matthew tries to make clear. That Jesus, the uber great great grandson of King David was that Messiah. The chosen one. The king. But you gotta know the Jewish people were expecting this Messiah to bring the false, bring the revenge, and bring destruction to the ravenous Roman Empire. You gotta know that many of the Israelites couldn't believe their eyes when Jesus came with a message of forgiveness and love instead of revenge and hate. You gotta know that after months of practice, I can finally do the splits. Huzzah! Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. So, where does that mean we'll find Matthew in the Bible? Matthew ends with one of the most powerful verses in the entire New Testament. Yeah, it happens just after Jesus rose from the dead and he calls his disciples together to show them that he is most definitely alive. Most people know it as the Great Commission. Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember when we were kids and you thought it was Grape Commission and so you kept like going to our Sunday school teacher and trying to convince her that Jesus was actually telling everybody to eat more grapes? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Great for me. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 18 to 19. Well, that's all the time we have for today, guys and gals. Are you ready to read the book of Matthew? Neat. Remember that Matthew wrote so that people would see that Jesus was the Messiah that everyone had been waiting for. Matthew's full of great stories and teachings and miracles that show that Jesus is the Messiah, the new king. He may not have been the Messiah that some people were expecting, because he was even more powerful than they could possibly imagine. Happy Bible reading, Average Jeff. Happy Bible reading, Boonsie. Hmm. God's love for us and his gift of Jesus are very good news. Oh, yeah, indeed. I mean, I feel loved by God and my secret admirer. Oh, yeah, your secret admirer. I forgot. Uh, is there more to the letter? What's it say? Oh, yeah, there's more. Uh, Jeremy, 
I love you so much, I don't want us to be apart. So I did my part in destroying everything that keeps you from me. Wow, you are being seriously pursued, my friend. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, now that I've destroyed that which keeps us away from each other, you just have to accept it and love me back. Then we can be together forever. So what got destroyed so you can be together? I have no idea. That's some tasty looking watermelon you got there, Kyle. I'm gonna use it to bust reality. Sweet. Let's bust some reality. Here, let me help you out with that. Welcome to Reality Busters. I'm Kyle. This is Jeremy. And this is the show where we bust reality by discovering things that only God has the power to do. Today's reality? Watermelon. And it comes from Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. Maybe we should explain. I was hoping you'd say that. Follow me. So Colossians 2 talks about the new life that we now have in Jesus. But in order to get that new life, something had to be done about that pesky sin problem. Fittingly represented by a watermelon. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to live the amazing life that God had planned for us with a watermelon strapped to your head. Well, I think what Jeremy's trying to say is that sin was keeping us from God. Yeah, I mean, look, it's totally getting in the way. Hey, I'm trying to get to Jesus. You can't. There's a big old watermelon in the way. No. That's when God came along and busted some major reality. He destroyed the watermelon. Well, technically, he destroyed the record of our sins. <laughs> Colossians 2, 13 and 14 says that he forgave our sins by canceling out our sins. It also says he took it and destroyed it by nailing it on the cross. Yeah, when Jesus died and then rose again, our sins were forgiven, canceled, destroyed. Our goal for today's show is to see what it would take to totally destroy sin. Or in our case, totally destroy a watermelon. Can we do it? Can we destroy sin? We'll start with manpower. Let's bust some reality. All right, so our first attempt today, I'm gonna try to destroy this watermelon using some of my ultimate fighting punches. And I am gonna hold the watermelon. Let's do this. Ready when you are. Nice little snacky. Mm. All right, it's my turn to unleash the fury. Hold this. All right, just leave me enough to snack on later, okay? All right, Mr. Meanie Melon. Have I got a surprise for you. Oh yeah, that was awesome. You destroyed that melon. I think the melon destroyed me. Yeah, I guess we did fall a bit short on our first attempt. Yeah, God destroyed sin way more than we destroyed this watermelon. At least now we can have snacky time. I think I want to have nappy time. Well, we weren't able to equal God's power on that attempt. So now it's time to move on to Gadget power. Vin -vin! All 
All right, Jeremy, you want to walk us through how this thing is going to work? You bet. We've altered an ordinary teeter-totter to increase the velocity and mass distribution in order to maximize our torque output and trajectory ratio. In other words, we've created a super-totter that will launch this watermelon hundreds of feet into the air until it comes racing back to Earth and shatters against the ground. Well, that should wipe out sin. And by sin, I mean watermelon. Absolutely. Let's get this baby locked and loaded. All right, I think we're ready for launch. How do we get this baby rocking? Just apply some mass transference to the ignition platform. Just stomp on it. Gotcha. Okay. Three, two. One. Launch. Well, that was lame. I don't understand it. That should have shot like 200 feet in the air. I thought we did everything right. I had the differential set correctly. And I had the melon loaded properly. And I applied some mass transference to the ignition platform. What? I stomped on it. Like this. Oh. Oh. Too much mass transference. I think I need another nappy time. All right, manpower does not forgive sins. And gadget power does not forgive sins. That leaves only one thing left. <laughs> Melon go boom. And now it's time to destroy a watermelon. Well, you mean sin. Remember? We're going to try and destroy sin with as much power as God destroys sin when he forgives us. That's right. Okay, so what's it going to take to test that idea? We're going to blow up a watermelon. I love this show. Okay, before we go any further, you should know that we have no idea what we're doing. That's right. And if we don't know what we're doing, then you absolutely don't know what you're doing. So don't pretend that you know what we're doing so that you can go out and do it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> confusing. In other words, leave the stunts to us while you watch comfortably from your home. Got it? Don't try this. Ever. Okay, we've rigged the watermelon out there with explosives. So now we get to see just how powerful God's forgiveness really is. Shall I press the boom button? Yes. Yes, you shall. Oh, that was incredible. Yes. Oh, I have found my new favorite way to open a watermelon. Check it out. Destroyed. Just like God destroyed the record of our sins when Jesus died on the cross. But wait, there's still pieces everywhere. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There's melon, like, all over the place. Dude, you know what that means. Yeah. It means that God's power is even more powerful than firepower. Yeah, as much as I love destroying melon, I love God's forgiveness even more. Well, that's all the melon busting time we've got for today. Remember, because of Jesus, the record of our sin was destroyed. So live knowing that nothing stands between you and God. When God busted reality, sin went boom. I don't know if I'm worthy of the shepherd's love, sheep. I've messed up a lot. I don't know if you know this, but I have a bit of a temper. <laughs> Sorry, Joaquin. We're all out of ketchup. Empty fridge. No ketchup! <laughs> <laughs>
And sheep, how can the shepherd love me? One time I stepped on a guy's hoof, and I didn't even say sorry. <laughs> I'm a monster! Oh, I've messed up a time or two as well, but I think the shepherd loves us even if we do flub things up from time to time. Are you crazy, sheep? Why would he love me when all I do is mess up and have to keep apologizing? He's just that kind of shepherd, Joachim. His love is way bigger than our little tantrums. Okay. Uh, musical theater, Prodigal Son, Blues Riff, here we go. All right. Now this story's about a man, two sons he had. One's about to make him happy, the other's gonna make him sad. I got the blues. Prodigal Son Blues. Oh, yeah. This man had lots of money. And his youngest son did groan. Give me my money, Daddy. So I can go out on my own. I had the blues. Prodigal Son Blues. Doing. I'm coming home, running home, love me. Okay, you're early. I'm coming in too early. Well, no, that's what the story's about. Prodigal son, he comes home and he's accepted, you know, even after all the wrong things that I've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, yeah, you're totally right. But there's still more to the story that hasn't happened yet. You gotta, oh. Prodigal son spends all his money and has to eat with pigs. Oh, gross. Yeah, there's more. That's all right. We'll get it figured out. Okay. <clears throat> all right, here we go. All right. So the son took his money, went out into the world. He bought gold-plated earmuffs and so much candy he hurled. He spent money on fried chicken and some new pairs of shoes. He got implants for his biceps and 30 gallons of big league chew. I got the blue. Prodigal Son Blues. Oh, yeah. Now this part Daddy, of the story Daddy, I'm home! Okay, what? Why? The Prodigal Son has returned! The Prodigal Son returned early. Too early. Huh? You're still coming in too early. Or are you too late? <laughs> oh, you're too early. Hey, hey, hey. Fine. I don't know what a prodigal is anyway. It sounds... Sticky. All right. We're doing all right. Just wait for it. Just gotta wait for it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Now this young son is penniless and sad. He has no job, no friends. Nothing to eat. This is bad. So we got the lowest job. Beaten slop to the pigs. He smelled like piggy droppings. And the pigs ate better than he did. They got the blue. Prodigal son blue. Hey, here I am. Yeah, I'm back. I oh. smell like pigs. Oh. And oh. I am hungry. So, uh, here you go. You can love me now. I have been a bad boy. You're really taking this too seriously, but you gotta wait for your cue. There's a cue line. Well, how am I supposed to know? It's, it's really obvious. It's a very obvious cue. You're gonna know it when you hear it. Okay. Okay. Prodigal? Oh, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Wait for your cue. Be patient. Okay. Here we go. Now 
the sun was feeling low, lowest he ever had. And he decided to go back and see his dad. He was still far away when his dad saw him there. And his dad started running, taking him a rope to wear. His dad bought him jewels, said, I'm so glad you're done. You come on back home. I still love you, you're my son. You come back home, I still love you, you're my son, the son is home, come back to see his, come back to see his dad, the son, he was, he was gone now, he's prodigal, so back, uh, coming down the street and his dad's out on the driveway using the leaf blower, the son, where, the son is, dude, Jeremy, dude, what, that was your cue. What was? The son came back home and the dad ran out to meet him and he'd been so anxious just to have his son back home again and they met oh. at the road and right. and then your part. Um, oh, daddy. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Okay, um. Good. Daddy! Oh. I fell on my prodigal. Okay, so your secret admirer loves you and wants to be with you forever. And destroyed whatever it was that was keeping us apart. So who is it? Well, I don't know. That's why it's a secret admirer. It's a secret. I mean, how am I, oh. Ha! I just didn't have the paper unfolded all the way, so now I can read it just fine. So I, who is it? Oh, uh, it's from God. God is your secret admirer? God loves me more than I could imagine. And God wants to be with you forever. That's right. And God destroyed sin that was keeping us apart, just like the reality busters taught us. Okay. You see, it was sin that was separating us until Jesus came and made it go boom. And, okay, God showed us he loved us by sending us Jesus to get rid of that sin and by taking us in and loving us even when we mess up really big, like in that song. That's it. I mean... God loves me. I feel so great. It's just like it says in 1 John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. It is good to be loved. Oh, yeah, it is. Now, talk about this. When and how does God show you that he loves you? And when have you felt his presence in your life? And talk about a time that you messed up. Man, God loves you and he will always take you back. Always. You know what? We should write letters back to God. Ah, oh, good call.